Test Rocket by Jack Douglas It's amazing how much you can learn about absolute strangers if you just stop to think about the kind of animal they'll put in a Test Rocket by Jack Douglas. Captain Baird stood at the window of the laboratory where the thousand parts of the strange rocket lay strewn in careful order small groups worked slowly over the dismantled parts the captain wanted to ask but something stopped him behind him dr johansen sat at his desk his gnarled old hand tight around a whiskey bottle the bottle the doctor always had in his desk but never brought out except when he was alone and waited for captain baird to ask his question captain baird turned at last they are our markings captain baird asked it was not a question captain baird knew the markings of the rocket testing station as well as the doctor did yes the doctor said they are our markings identical but not our paint captain baird turned back to the window six months ago it had happened ten minutes after launching the giant test rocket had been only a speck on the observation screen captain baird had turned away in disgust a mouse the captain had said unfortunate a mouse can't observe build and report my men are getting restless johansen when we are ready captain the doctor had said it was twelve hours before the urgent call from central control had brought the captain running back to the laboratory the doctor was there before him professor schultz wasted no time he pointed to the instrument panel a sudden shift see for yourself we'll miss mars by a million and a quarter at least two hours later the shift in course of the test rocket was apparent to all of them and so was their disappointment according to the instruments the steering shifted a quarter of an inch no reason shows up professor schultz said flaw in the metal dr johansen said how far can it go captain baird asked professor schultz shrugged until the fuel runs out which is probably as good as never or until the landing mechanism is activated by a planet-sized body course did you plot it the doctor asked of course i did professor schultz said as close as i can calculate it is headed for alpha centauri captain baird turned away the doctor watched him perhaps you will not be quite as hasty with your men's lives in the future captain the doctor said professor schultz was spinning dials no contact the professor said no contact at all it had been six months ago three more test rockets had been fired successfully before the urgent report came through from alaska observation post number four a rocket was coming across the pole the strange rocket was tracked and escorted by atomic armed fighters all the way to the rocket test station where it cut its own motors and gently landed in the center of a division of atomic armed infantry the captain the doctor and everyone else waited impatiently there was an air of uneasiness you're sure it's not ours captain baird asked the doctor laughed identical yes but three times the size of ours perhaps one of the asian ones no it's our design but too large much too large professor schultz put their thoughts into words looks like someone copied ours someone somewhere it's hard to imagine but true nevertheless they waited two weeks nothing happened then a radiation shielded team went in to examine the rocket two more weeks and the strange rocket was dismantled and spread over the field of the testing station the rocket was dismantled and the station began to talk to itself in whispers and look at the sky captain baird stood now at the window and looked out at the dismantled rocket he looked but his mind was not on the parts of the rocket he could see from the window the materials they're not ours the captain asked unknown here the doctor said the captain nodded those were our instruments yes the doctor still held the whiskey bottle in a tight grip 
They sent them back, the captain said. The doctor crashed the bottle hard against the desk top. Ask it, captain, for God's sake. The captain turned to face the doctor directly. It was a man, a full-grown man. The doctor sighed, as if letting the pent-up stream from his heart escape. Yes, it was a man. It breathes, it eats, it has all the attributes of a man. But it is not of our planet. It's speech, the captain began. That isn't speech, captain, the doctor broke in, breaking in sharply. It's only sound. The doctor stopped. He examined the label of his bottle of whiskey very carefully. A good brand of whiskey. He seems quite happy in the storeroom. You know, Captain, what puzzled me at first? He can't read. He can't read anything, not even the instruments in that ship. In fact, he shows no interest in his rocket at all. The captain sat down. He sat at the desk and faced the doctor. At least they had the courage to send a man and not a mouse, doctor. A man. The doctor stared at the captain. His hand squeezed and unsqueezed on the whiskey bottle. A man who can't read his own instruments, the doctor laughed. Perhaps you too have failed to see the point. Like that stupid general who sits out there waiting for men from somewhere to invade? Don't you think it's possible? The doctor nodded. A very good possibility, captain, but they will not be men. The doctor seemed to pause and lean forward. That rocket, Captain, is a test rocket. A test rocket just like ours. Then the doctor picked up his whiskey bottle at last and poured two glasses. Perhaps a drink, Captain? The Captain was watching the skies outside the window. The End of Test Rocket by Jack Douglas <laughs>